Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we will be learning how can you connect your React application with PHP backend server. It is going to be a short informative video. So if you are going to be liking this video, please do not forget to subscribe to my channel and press the notification bell for more amazing content like this. So yes, I know guys, it's too late uploading this video. It's almost one month, but guys, surely from now onwards, the video is going to be coming regularly because I was busy on some kind of project. All right, so without wasting any more time, let's jump right into the video. All right, guys, so as you can see over here, I'm having my fresh React app and I'm running my React application as you can see it out over here. That looks really amazing. Okay, so now what we actually need to do over here is that first let's create a form in which we are going to see our example for connecting our backend. That means my our PHP server. So for that we are going to create a div with a class name of app. This is just going to be a simple code. We are going to create a simple form, okay, which is going to take action in it which is going to take method for now let's keep it this much we are going to be having on submit also but for now we are not going to go to it inside this form we are going to create a label but for now i'm going to just create an input no need of label because it is just a short example on how can we connect our react app with php server so input we can have provide it a type of text id you can go with the input name that is going to be name this is this is the input for name so we're going to go with the id of name and of course the name values also needs to be same that is going to be name the value right now we are not having any value so we are going to keeping it as empty then we're going to have an on chain when the user types anything the, in, the input we need to change that value so we are going to be having a simple input after that we are going to be having a line break so we are going to be having a line break okay and after that i will create a button which is going to be for submitting our data of the input and i'll just provide a text to that button which is going to be submit all right so now we're getting an error inside this value so for fixing this we need to import use state from react and now let's come before our return and inside our function and now we are going to create two state values. One is going to be for our input, which is name, which is going to be our state value. And it is going to be an empty string. And the second one we are going to create for the result, whether it is connected or whether it is not connected to our server. For specifying that, we are going to create a new state variable, which is going to be named as result. And it is also going to be set as an empty string. All right, that's great. And now in our input, we're gonna add a value which is going to be name. And now when the user types anything inside this input, we are gonna catch that event. And then we are gonna call a function which is going to be a handle change function. And inside this function, we are gonna pass our event. So now we haven't created this function yet. So let's create out this function after our state variables so i'll just provide some space for easy code understanding and a clean code so first we are going to create a function which is going to be for handling our input change and we are going to be getting an event from our input right so we're going to pass it as a parameter inside our component and then we are going to set our state variable that is set name to the events target value it's that simple let's save it and let's come to our browser safari and as you can see over here we are having a simple input and a submit looking button that's really good now let's create a function for handling the submit and then let's start connecting our react application with php so we are going to create a function and we'll name this function as let's go with handle submit In this function, we are going to be getting an event that we are going to provide it as default because we don't want whenever we are calling this function, our page will reload. So for 
stopping it from reloading we are going to select our event and prevent it as default all right so that's it with our front end but we need to write some code in our handle submit before that let's come to our form and inside this form we are going to be having an action which is going to be our back server but method for submitting our form is going to be post and when the user submits the form on submit what we actually need to do over here is that on submit we are going to be getting an event from user input and then we are going to call we are going to call a function which is going to be handle submit and we are going to pass that event into our handle submit function now let's come to our handle submit function in this we are going to create a variable let's create it as form and then we are going to be selecting our event and we are going to target that event now we are going to be using a jquery over here so for that we need to install a package and we need to see a library called jquery from npmjs.com the link will be provided in the description below so we are going to select our jquery ajax format and in this we are going to be selecting the type which is going to be post for submitting our data from our form we are going to be using the post method and now we need to specify the url over here which is going to be our action so let's select our form from our form we actually need this url then we need to have an attribute called over here and what we need from our url we need an action that means we need a url that will be specified in our form action so we're going to select our action over here after that we need a data from our form so form dot serialize method that's it then we're going to be having a success message over here we're going to select our data not date actually guys it is data sorry i apologize for that it is data when it is success i will set the result over here to that specific data that's great so now what we need over here is that we need to have an action over here so for specifying that action we are going to go with a url over here which is going to be a local host url we can specify a port number to it let's go with 8000 for now you can specify whatever you like for now we are going to go with 8000 and then we are going to name our php file which is going to be server.php for now okay so that looks good our react app looks good so i think so you all understood what we have done over here it is simple we have created a function for submitting our form and in our action in our form action we are calling a url and we are calling our php file that we haven't created it yet so don't be confused i will explain you right now so now what happens in a basic html css and php code we are going to be using a xam as our local server but when we are working with react we will be creating our own server so for creating our own server you need to specify a url for now we are going with 8000 port and your php file name that needs to be server.php and now the most important thing over here that you need to listen carefully that is where you actually need to keep your php files in your react app so for keeping your php files in your react app you need to come in main directory and create not inside the source directory inside your main directory and create a folder named as php in capital letters in this you need to create your php file for connecting your react app to your php server so we'll name it as server.php for now now inside our php file we are going to be calling our basic php code syntax and in this the first thing that we need to write to understand our react app to connect it to our php server we need to get an access control to allow the origin to the port number of our react application that is port number that means localhost 3000 for example inside this header we need to write an access control allow origin now the local server for your react app so for now i will go with localhost my localhost 3000 simple so i will explain you what is happening over here 
if we are going to be connecting our React tab with the PHP backend server. Of course, for connecting it and for making it work properly in our React tab, we need to give our PHP code and access to our React application because of some security reasons. So now, when you come to your React tab, your React tab is running in a localhost 3000 port number or it is in localhost 3001 depending on you, you need to just change it right over here. That means tell PHP that access control, give the access control to this URL. That means give the access control to my React app. That's it guys, with this single line of code, your React app is connected with a PHP backend server. So for showing you a basic example, what I'm gonna do over here is that I'm gonna create a user variable. In this user variable, I'm gonna be using the dollar post over here to get the data from our form, which is having a name of name. And then I need to show that username that the user have entered inside the input. So I will echo it as, hello from server and now over here i will display the variable dollar user all right so now the most important thing as i told you to don't skip the video and watch the video till end to understand it properly so in basic you need to use your zap control panel right but when you're working with react and dealing with php server with your react application you don't need to run XAMPP control panel. You just need your own server. So now I have created my own server. So how can I actually start my own server? So as you can see over here in my app.js, I created an action of localhost 8000. This is my own server that I have created. And inside this server, I'm gonna run my server.php file. So for running it, what we need is we are gonna be opening up a new terminal over here. And I will come inside my PHP directory. And inside my PHP directory, I'm gonna write out this code, which is going to be PHP hyphen capital S. And now you need to write your local server name. That is HTTP double slash localhost 8000. But as you can see, it is giving me an invalid address. So let's go with php hyphen s and over here you need to just define the localhost server that is localhost 8000 no need to write the http code over here so now as you can see the development server in the localhost 8000 port number has started that means our backend server our php server that we have created by our own is running successfully so now let's test our application so here is my react tab i will give it a good refresh and now I will enter my name over here. Let's go with uh, easy to code. And now let me click on submit. Oh my God, I'm not able to see the result. So that is a simple mistake that I've made over here inside my React application. What I actually need to do over here is when my form ends, I will create an H1 tag and I want it to display my result state variable that I've created. That's it guys, sorry for that mistake, I apologize. So as you can see, when my app is, once my app is refreshed, I can see my username being displayed over here. For a good example, I'm gonna do it again. Let's go with Bobby, that is my nickname. And let me click on submit, and as you can see, hello from server Bobby. So that's it guys, it is, was a really simple and a short video on how can you connect your React application with the PHP backend server by creating your own local server. All right guys, so if you like this video, please do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and press the notification bell for more amazing videos like this. So, as you can see a small notice before ending up this video. Here is my new setup tour and my room tour actually over here and many of you commented out that you all need to see my setup. So actually I'm not having one single setup. The setup you can see over here. This desk is my like gaming setup, programming setup in which I have multiple operating systems. One is my this gaming PC, one gaming PC is running on my left side. One is my Mac mini on the bottom and multiple things are over here. And on the back that you can see over there, that is my MacBook and my console gaming setup. So why am I not creating a setup tool right now? 
because I need to get some more things over here to make my setup complete. So that means I will be bringing multi types of consoles, PS1, PS2, PS3, PS4 Pro I do have, Xbox 360 One and many more. Once everything is ready, I will be creating an unbox video on my gaming channel. The link will be provided in the description below and the setup tool will also be coming in my gaming channel. Alright guys, that's it for this video. If you like the video, do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and press the notification bell for more amazing content like this. Till then, peace.